Good day everyone. Today I want to introduce to you my friend who is a polyglot, Diego. He is from Petrópolis, Brazil, uh, state Rio de Janeiro. And uh, he knows a lot of foreign languages, especially the specific languages like Japanese. So, can you tell me more about yourself? Uh, in generally, how was your experience with the languages? What was your experience with your languages? And what was the first language uh, you learned? Um, I've, the, the first language I've learned was English. Uh, out of necessity, my parents enrolled me at a free uh, language course. I didn't like language at the time. I didn't believe at all that I could learn any foreign language. And it was uh, the, the first experience uh, which has given me the self-confidence to pursue other languages uh, to the measure that I progressed in learning English in feeling that I, I could advance, I could uh, get mastery of another language which was not my own. So the, the first one was the most difficult one. All those which came after that were fairly easy in comparison. Uh, so I about English, so uh, the system you learn it was just the traditional uh, classes in the language course. Yes. Uh, did, did, you, did you do any supplementary work at home or not, which the course did not require or not? By the end of my course, I got really interested in the English language. So I started learning by myself, started taking books for me to read, taking movies for me to watch with the subtitles to help my understanding. So I it came to like it. I hated it at first, but it was a matter of feeling that it could be my thing, languages. They could become something uh, of my... Uh, of, of my preference. I could be comfortable with languages. Um, unlike it felt before, when I didn't know any English at all. Interesting. So, I mean, in accordance with the course itself, how many hours per week uh, did you have of classes? Three hours. Three hours. No more than three hours a week. And during three years and a half. Okay, so it took you three years and a half uh, per three hours per week. Yes, I, I enrolled when I was 14 years old and I finished when I was 17. And by that time, I had already started learning German. Okay, With... now, now there is another story about it. We uh, have to uh, Deutsch gelernt. Allein. Ich habe ein Buch in meiner Schule gefunden, das Deutsche unterrichtete. Der Name ist Wie man heute Deutsch lernt. Und, äh, hast du mit diesem Buch äh, Deutsch studiert? Gelernt, ja, ja. Gelernt, Deutsch gelernt. Ja, äh, in, äh, am Anfang. Es war äh, dieses Buch. Äh, dennoch. Äh, danach, äh, ich habe äh, versucht, äh, Deutsche, äh, deutsche Bücher zu lesen, so wie äh, Nietzsche. Äh, ich habe eine, äh, eine Jahre lang menschliches, altmenschliches von Nietzsche äh, durchgelesen. Äh, ein, ein, ein Jahr lang. Äh, viel, viel, aber, viel Zeit. Aber, aber, aber Nietzsche ist ein Schriftsteller, die, der ist sehr schwierig zu verstehen, ich glaube. Ja. Was meinst du? Denn dennoch, die, ich, ich hatte die, die, die Ansporn, der, der Ansporn, äh, es zu lesen, weil äh, an, an, an jenem Zeit äh, Nietzsche äh, interessierte äh, mich äh, tief. Und äh, äh, danach äh, nach Deutsch. Äh, was, für andere, was für andere Sprache hast du gelernt? Wenn ich äh, 17 Jahre alt war, äh, 
studierte ich Spanisch am Schule. Erstmals äh, Spanisch. Interessante, que interessante. Ah, podemos agora falar espanhol? Ah, sim, por supuesto. Ah, que bien. Ah, puedes puedes, uh, me, puedes uh, decirme ah, qual me, método ah, ah, é es, es usado para aprender espanhol? O método que he empleado eh, mais a menudo ha sido eh, os textos en, eh, periodísticos na internet. Eh, Quando eh, eh, eu tinha 17 anos, eh, por um ano he estudado espanhol na, na escola, mas he começado a ler os periódicos de, de, de Argentina, de Espanha, sobre todos os assuntos, e é o método, eh, até hoje, 10 anos depois, é o que eu eh, utilizo mais a menudo, com mais frequência para aprender a todos os idiomas, que são os, os artículos na internet. Uh, so now I switch again to English uh, because there is another topic I want to discuss a specific language, namely Japanese. Uh, just a little bit out of the topic, uh, I know that recently you visited Japan. Uh, what's just uh, just before going uh, to, to just before getting to the Japanese language learning method itself? I would like to just to ask you. Uh, what was your impression about Japan itself? Uh, did you like it or not? And what's, what was the specific points you like? You may tell this in Japanese if you want. If you may tell to our friends, my subscribers in English. Just whatever. If you speak in Japanese, I will make subtitles, translations. And uh, just share your experience. What did you like about Japan? What did you, what you didn't like? And uh, that's it. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
about your experience with Japanese. First question is why? Why did you decide to learn Japanese? What was the reason? Uh, yes, I, I always had some uh, interest in Japanese culture. I didn't know why. So I, I when I was a high school student, I, I liked some not all, not most of them. I, I like some anime and manga, uh, especially Evangelion and uh, uh, Ruroni Kenshin. And uh, especially Ruroni Kenshin made me deeply interested in Japanese history, in Japanese uh, uh, customs and the, Jap the Japanese past. I felt a sense of identification with that that I couldn't explain. And, but there are many th things in the Japanese culture that I couldn't understand, I couldn't identify with, simply. It was too strange for me. But little by little, I, I wanted to know more about Japanese culture and also Chinese culture, Korean culture, the East Asian cultures. One day, I, I bought a, a very small book called uh, uh, El, El Pensamiento Japonés, uh, The Japanese Thought. It is a book published in Argentina. So I read all the schools of thought, all the, the ways of thought that uh, appeared in Japanese history. And most of them uh, didn't interest me very much, such as Confucianism and, and the native Shinto religion, Japanese mythology. Not, it was not so much, interest, uh, much interesting for me. But for my, to my utmost surprise, Buddhism, the Buddhist thought, was extremely engaging for me. And it was from for, for this book that I, for the first time, I seriously engaged with Buddhist thought. And for the first time, I really appreciated the importance of Buddhism for the Japanese culture. So, so some years later, I became, uh, when I was 23 years old, I became a Buddhist. Interesting. And you didn't tell me about it. <laughs> and that same month, when I, I, I prayed through the three jewels for the first time, I decided that I would learn Japanese for ser for, 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 seriously. Because it was the only language of Buddhist countries that I had learned a bit before, out of my interest in Japanese culture. I did, so I thought, uh, should I learn Chinese? Should I learn Japanese? Should I learn as a side language, should I learn Japanese? I will learn Japanese, the one I already know a bit. So, from four years ago to now, I seriously studied the Japanese language and it was worth my while, all the way. Okay, so tell me, could you tell me a little bit about your experience with Japanese? The methods you learned, like, what was the frequency you studied this, you learned it, I mean, how many times per, per week? Um, like yeah, the methods you learn, like what kind of you, you just pick up like yeah, formal lessons or uh, you use textbooks or you read or other lessons you listen to music. You can tell me more about it. But uh, uh, as I said, four years ago I enrolled in my, uh, a Japanese course, a formal uh, Japanese course. I met a, a very dedicated teacher, Japanese teacher. It is two Japanese women at the course. And I studied for one year and a half formally, uh, every week going there, taking the lessons. And during, during weekdays, I, I always uh, tried to, to, to hear something, uh, some Japanese songs, uh, to try to read some Japanese texts. Although, uh, may, even not understanding all uh, the whole of it, but always trying, always checking some vocabulary. In one of the methods, especially for Japanese language and German language, that I employed, I think it's not a very efficient method, but I, I, I like employing it. Okay, it share it, share it, share it. To read texts above your level of comprehension. And even though you can't understand, you can only understand 40% of it, 30% of it. Because you get words, you get a, a gist. I get a notion of the, what words are the most common ones. So, uh, I, after having read some s 10 articles on the internet, for example, I, uh, I get to know ah, that Aufgehen has appeared 
four times. Ah, that's an important word. It's, it's one I will learn first. I can guess it. You can guess it out. Uh, sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. But even though, even in the cases where I, where I can't guess the word, guess the meaning, I see, ah, this one is an important word, is the one I will check out first. I won't check every, every single word, but I will check the ones that I have seen before in another text that I can be sure that is an important word in the language, so it should have a priority. Why I will I... Uh, w uh, in the beginning of my learning of a language, uh, look up a certain useless word uh, that happens uh, uh, only once in a million texts. No, this one I can learn last. I will have a, an idea of the most important words first. So I, I learn them and the next, uh, after you have learned a specific word, the next text will also show this word some, with some frequency. So it's easier for me to keep that word. I, I agree with you. Listen, I had the same uh, experience with Indonesian because, uh, uh, listen, uh, in Ukraine generally, generally, I tried to find some proper Indonesian and just I, I finished up giving up. Because it was like the books I found in English were were hard to use to to learn a language. But in the end, what I what I finished with was that uh, I had books in Indonesian, some novels, especially for teenagers, and there were a lot of dialogues there. And uh, like for about two months, I've just been reading them in my electronic book. I mean, on my way from work and to work from home, and like this. And uh, I mean, after after two months, I was able to just to tell, uh, to retell my resume, my experience, and be able to participate in, in an interview for a job, for instance, like this. I even have this video in one at my personal channel on the internet, but uh, YouTube channel. And uh, well, I think like this method is not really kind of difficult method. It just in the beginning, I think it's hard to. When you don't understand almost anything, and like it's hard to keep yourself going, just to go further or like to check up dictionary all the time. Uh, well, it it requires uh, nerves. It requires I don't know perseverance, but I mean it's worth it. Worth it. It it is worth it. So try it out if you find it useful. Try it out. It's one of those methods. And like right now, he is he is the first my friend who tells me that he used the same method I use for it, not for like for in other languages. And uh, well, if uh, already two persons use it, I mean uh, it deserves uh, its way to live. Um, may I ask you another question? I know also like you mentioned Korea. I know uh, last year you've been there. I mean, can you share what, what, like, is this country worth going to? I mean, did you like it there? What's the difference in between them, uh, like between them and Brazilians, for the, for example? And like, uh, for instance, if I like Brazilian culture and everything, I mean, but I also keen on Asian culture. Is it the country to go to? It depends uh, very much uh, on what you you search. If you if you are looking for Asianness, okay, where the stereotypes of Asia, the historical places, the palaces, the temples. So uh, Japan and China are better places to go. But if uh, you have a specific interest in something of Korea, like I had, uh, I was interested in Korean mountain temples. I was interested in Korean, in Korean culture, in Korean history, the the, the history of the. Uh, extremely fast development from one of the most miserable countries in the world in the 1950s from a, super, a technological superpower that they are today I wanted to I had a, already a, a specific interest in things Korean I had a knowledge of their history and some knowledge about the country that even Koreans were surprised to hear from me well it depends you know like some, some of the things I don't know the history a lot of points in the history about my, my own country, Ukraine. And uh, well, 
because there are sometimes there are specific points which I mean uh, which you don't have really interest when you are a kid and you have it like in the school and uh, for instance uh, the same thing about Brazil like there are lots of points in the history about Brazil I think um, what else I would like to ask you what 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 would you what would you have, uh, like to advise to my subscribers how can they learn the language I mean fast uh, what uh, what they should dwell on what kind of method for them to use. I mean, general principle, what would you like to advise, for instance, for a beginner who wants to learn a Ukrainian, for instance, or any other language? I mean, your principles. Well, I would advise a, a, a very important language for them to learn, first of all, the language of silence. I would advise everyone who wanted to learn a specific language to walk silently until they are in front of a mirror and silently looking at the mirror and asking why? Why do I really want to learn that language? What will it bring to me? What will this language enable me to help other people, to contribute to the lives of other people? I think that it's from such reflections that the most precious resource um, comes. This resource is motivation. Interesting, interesting thought. I mean, I never ever thought about it. I just, I just listen. With my languages, I just, I just feel I like it, I pursue it. <laughs> And I feel but you I've... did the process, implicitly did the process. Yeah. If you really wanted to learn them, you had a, a deep reason for that. I just I just feel I like it and I do it. I mean <laughs> you don't over dramatize yeah. like me. Yeah, with me it's just more <laughs> simple. I, I I sometimes I just don't think about uh, like about what for I learn, but in the in a way I mean I learn it and then like appear opportunities, possibilities. <laughs> New people, new friends, and sometimes new life. What it came, what, what it came uh, out with my Portuguese, and like if there was no Portuguese, I mean I would rather right now, I don't know, be in China. I think uh, like trying to uh, also convert myself to Buddhism. I don't know, but <laughs> right now, right now I'm just in Brazil and trying to uh, get married. I mean, that's ah, it. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you and my pleasure uh, too. Uh, I think next time we make one video, I think that hopefully, hopefully I will uh, sometimes, uh, somehow, somehow will provoke you to learn either Ukrainian or any other Slavic languages. I don't know, but uh, next time we'll make a new video uh, with another set of languages. So. Uh, keep on learning languages, try to use the methods we advise, I mean our specific book reading method for instance. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free uh, to write uh, be uh, below the video. So it was, was a pleasure to talk to you and uh, till the next time, bye!